Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 308 of Drunk Dashers Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Adam Teller, and joining me, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? Hey, Tyler. Man, I'm doing all right. Kind of a little bit of a long night, mm-hmm. but at the same point, I can't wait to get into our top 10s. Yeah, so for us, it's only been 20 minutes since we finished uh, episode 307. For you guys, it's been a week. Um, we're back, like I said, uh, last week we were doing our top 10 uh, well, we're doing our overall thoughts on 2018 gaming. Last week was our overall thoughts on a different bunch of different categories, uh, good and bad. And this um, this week is going to be part one of our top ten games of 2018. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go in order. I'll do ten, then he'll, then Gables do ten. Uh, Justin uh, couldn't join us uh, this week, so I uh, I have his top ten list here. I, I I have honestly not read any of them. I have it right here. In front of me, I've yet, I have yet to scroll down to see them, though. So, uh, as I read them, it'll be a surprise to me what they are. Um, so, jumping right on into it. Gables, um, you know, since Justin's not here, I think what we should do would probably, honestly, is read his first. Yes. And then uh, I'll do mine, and then you do yours. Does that sound good to you? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, number 10 for Justin is Gorgoa. Um, that was actually a really good game that came out. Um, I think it was right at the beginning of the year. Actually, uh, it was on. It was on. It came on the mobile uh, mobile devices at the end of the year last year, and then it came a Switch beginning of the year. Really cool puzzle game. But that is his number ten game of the year. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of. Uh, he doesn't really go into great detail. He just says uh, most creative game for him. Um, so yeah, that's his number ten. My number ten, Gables, is Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, so uh-huh. yeah, uh, like I said on our last podcast that, uh, this is a, it's, I hate, there's, there's two things I can't stand in the nerd culture. Uh, it's anime and especially of all anime, it's fucking Dragon Ball. Can't stand it. <laughs> hate them both. Uh, and the fact that not only, like I said last time, um, was I interested in this game that I buy this game, but I actually really like this game is crazy to me. Um, the, the only, it would be much higher on my list, this, uh, um, uh, on this year's list, if not for the reason of the cutscenes uh, in the story mode, I really, really, really adored this game. Love playing the game. Um, I just not, could not stand the cutscenes. Uh, after a while, I just, I, I, I dealt them as much as I could, uh, at a certain point, if I, I just, I could not, I could not get past them, but, uh, Incredible game. One of the one of the first games I, I played this uh, of 2018 that came out in, uh, in this year uh, and stood out to me all year. A game that I went back to multiple times throughout the year. Uh, so that's something that kind of stood the test of time. Of it wasn't just a cool, you know, fun weekend or a fun week. This was a game that I, I regularly went back to multiple times throughout the year. So um, my number ten, Dragon Ball Fighters. Gables, what's yours? West of Loathing. Ooh, okay. Okay. <laughs> now, West of Loathing is one of those games where I initially was surprised off the cuff when I downloaded it and just enjoyed bits of the story. Just out of the blue, I was just reading a bunch of the text and stuff. I heard next to nothing about this game initially. There were some reviews going around that really loved this game. It was released on Steam previously, but on the consoles, especially for Switch, it came out this year. It's one of those technicalities that usually happens almost every year, it seems like, where if a game releases on Switch, it becomes a 2018 or 20-something game. Yeah. But <clears throat> West of Loathing is definitely one of those games where at its surface, you think it's kind of like uh, not so much depth and stuff because it looks simplistic, the choices are simplistic, this and that, but it's actually a decent like uh, turn-based RPG <laughs> That has some really funny dialogue, and I kid you not, some of the funniest moments of the gaming this year had to involve me going through and choosing options for different characters or something like that. Like, going through and, like, learning, like, finding a book or something to learn how to speak Goblin, and going (laughs) through and try to uh, convince this dude just to go forth and stop attacking some town. (laughs) Or, basically going through, like, a, uh, (laughs) going through, like, a uh, saloon or something like that. 
like almost every town and then going through the spittoon and just like reaching my hand and just like all the freaking text prompts or something like that and just reading the dialogue like the, the narrator or something just like getting equally amount as disgusted every time you go through and stick your hand inside the fucking spittoon and finding like useful shit it's like well and it gets to the point it's like you know what i don't even know why i'm just advising you right now it's like yeah go ahead do it get syphilis <laughs> or whatever the hell it's like what? <laughs> It was that one, it was that one defining moment, which I knew where it's like, yeah, this is a special game. All right. I'm, there's so much text in this game. It could have rated a bit higher if like, say there wasn't so much reading I did have to do in terms of this game, but in terms of what I read, in terms of what I enjoyed, it was definitely a great experience playing West of Loathing. I still have yet to finish the game. However, I've played... I've played enough of it to the extent where I feel like I'm close to halfway through the game, and there is so many fun, like, stuff, so many different types of things I've yet to experience. Oh, man, just naming off some little bits of what I've done, let's see, there are these cow creatures or something like that you gotta, you got to, like, take out and stuff like that, they're kind of like demon cows and this and that, mm-hmm. it's just ridiculous, the borderline ridiculous, but it's just awesome. So, yeah, that's my number 10. Right. 2018, West of Loathing. Very cool. Off to a big start. So, uh, pulling up Justin's number nine. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Uh, ah. And he says, I actually beat it, which is, that's big. I don't think Justin's ever beat a Pokemon ah. game ever in his entire life, even when we were kids. Uh, that so, a... that's cool. Um, very cool, Justin. Um, my number nine is a game I played recently, actually, um, that stood out to me. A uh, game I talked about a lot called Forgotten Anne. Um, oh, okay. So this came out, like I said, uh, a while back. It came out, I want to say, beginning of the year. Then it popped up on Switch a couple months ago. And I was just looking on recent releases on Switch. Saw it on there, watched the trailer. I'm like, this game looks fantastic. And I started reading I started reading a little bit about it, see how it was review-wise. And realized it's actually out on PS4 and PC and I think Xbox as well. Uh, and it was a little cheaper. It was on, actually, it just happened to be on sale, so I picked it up on PS4. And uh-huh. um, absolutely loved this game. Loved uh, uh, the world and the characters, uh, Forgotten Lands, as it was called, um, and all the characters in the game. You know, it, was a, it was a game about all the pieces, all the things that we lose in the house, whether it's socks, shoes, tables, lamps. Uh, there's, a, there's a magnum gun uh, that's also a police detective that I absolutely love. Um uh-huh. And the fact that not only are these, like, these are the characters of the games, I actually really cared about these characters, and I like these characters, and I love the dialogue. I like to find every little thing I could. You can overhear conversations uh, with, the, with the other characters, and I love to, like, just, like, because you're, like, you're, you're in the room next to me, you just kind of, like, you kind of eavesdrop on them. I'd go over there, I'm like, ooh, I want to hear this conversation. I'll just stop what I'm doing, stop playing the game, and listen to them talk, and just, like loving just love to hear like their their uh thoughts and opinions on the world or just learn more and more about the world itself um yeah no uh, i love i loved all of the story beats of this game the 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 art style is absolutely beautiful uh gorgeous uh probably on my top 10 list of games uh the best probably my favorite looking game uh just to look at uh the the one this game much like Dragon Ball Fighters, like Dragon Ball Fighters, I didn't like because anime. I like this game that really brings it down for me is the uh, the gameplay of it. I talked about a lot last uh, last few weeks about the uh, fact that the gameplay and the platforming was dreadful. And uh, if it wasn't for all of the things I just mentioned, I would have quit playing it. But uh, that just speaks to how great this game is. It's probably one of the worst games from a gameplay pers- perspective that I played this year. But the fact that the story, the characters, uh, and the art style carried me through this game alone uh, tells you how much I like this game. So, my number nine, uh, Forgotten Anne. So, uh, Gables, what's your number nine? Kirby, Star Allies. Okay, okay, okay. Well, here's the thing. I love my fair share of Kirby games, and even though, like, uh, even though, Tyler, you didn't really find too much of enjoyment for Kirby Star Allies earlier on this year... I can totally understand why, because a lot of it is fairly easy, and you can get through most of the game in the span of a day. But at the same point, though, there were definitely some fun points in the story, and definitely inside uh, the story of a Kirby game. I know, but there were definitely fun points where there was some creative level design stuff, 
I can agree that it was not maybe as strong as, say, I want to say Kirby Triple Deluxe or even playing a Robobot for some matters, though. But in a sense, I was still able to go through levels fairly easily. The end parts of the game were pretty fun. I have yet to go back and get like plenty of the collectibles in terms of 100%ing the game. But from what I played, it was actually a pretty fun Kirby game. You do have like a lot of various free DLC stuff for partner characters that you can that could help you throughout your journey and stuff. But it was a fun it was a fun like relaxing platformer to go through. It was definitely good the right time and stuff since that time period I was going through a lot that you, during this part of the year. But at the same point, it was definitely a reprieve just to go through, sit back on my Switch and play through a Kirby game. Because you know what? Kirby games are just that relaxing to me. <laughs> but anyway, that's my number nine. <laughs> no, well, very cool, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I just want to point out, I didn't really dislike the game. It just uh, wasn't my type of game. And, uh, you, you know, like I said, you could, uh, I flew through a good chunk of that game, but uh, enough to bring me back to it. But uh, moving on to our number eight, Justin's number eight game of 2018 is Octopath Travel. Uh, he said most memorable um so yeah that's cool to hear i that's i mean it's kind of a shocking thing growing up um with justin uh pokemon and rpg jrpgs were like my thing and uh nowadays those are not my thing it's funny as i i've gotten out of them <laughs> he's getting into them so it's really funny <laughs> uh but yeah that's awesome to, to, to hear that though he's enjoyed that game that game looks fantastic um for me though my number eight uh game of 2018 is a game called a way out uh ah there you so go so for me personally uh i think the real fun experience of this game was playing with you gables uh oh yeah so i, I mean if, I, if this was a just a run-of-the-mill single-player game um this it would have been like a cool game might have made my honorable mentions uh but, yeah um i thought you know the gameplay itself wasn't great the story wasn't awesome the characters were okay but my favorite moments of the game, the things that make me think about when I think about that game, what the first thing I think about are, like I said in the last show, arm wrestling, sitting on the swing set, playing Connect Four, um, dunking on your child, um, <laughs> you know, and and the, obviously the hospital scene. Uh, but uh, you know, I I definitely do want to give props. You know, the ending was rough. I mean, we talked about when, yeah, when that we, was rough. When we got there like this. It, this sucks but no matter no matter what ending you got either too it was like it was gonna be a rough thing and it was meant to be tugging at the heartstrings pretty much and it did a fairly good job of doing that that's for sure yeah yeah oh yeah and i, I think that was done on purpose especially with the fact that hey it knows like you're playing this game with a friend uh a, a significant other wife husband whatever kid uh so it knew that it was, gonna, it was putting you in a tough situation where you're like you've done all these like really cool moments with with your friend or whoever and now you know spoiler we're obviously we're it's it's game of the year stuff so some minor spoilers might happen in the end when you find out that the character i was playing as uh was actually undercover cop and you have one of one of you two has to die uh made it uh pretty rough to deal with but uh yeah, I, I still think the, the co-op game, the co-op portions of that game were so great, though. Like, us having to climb up the, the vent and, like, be back-to-back -back and wrap our arms around each other and <laughs> climb up there. Or the, the scene where, we're like, we're chiseling away at the wall behind the toilet. And oh, that's to, like, one of my favorites. Yeah, we have to warn each other about the guards coming. <laughs> it took me a few minutes to get through it. All of a sudden, it took you, like, about 15 because yeah. the guards kept coming back. Yeah. Uh, some reason, oh, God, that sucked. Uh, that was intense. The whole game was just like I was on the verge of uh, an aneurysm. Uh, but yeah, that it was it was a really good game. Uh, but like I said, the, the real bright spots of that game was playing with Gables. So Gables, what is your number eight game of 2018? Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Ooh, okay, okay. This is an indie title that I fairly enjoyed quite a bit when it came out. Bloodstained, the game that's pretty much inspired by old school castlevania games plays like an old school castlevania game but man it definitely has that sort of feel that i got when i first played shovel knight for the first time where it's like there's some good quality gameplay here the level design stuff is fairly fun and oh my gosh it's like it's like one of those classic gems that uh you forget about for a while or you you know you didn't you don't think is going to be like worth 
too much. I mean, when this game was announced initially, the whole Curse of the Moon stuff, I had totally forgotten that this was an additional game that was being made as part of that Kickstarter for for Ritual of the Night. And so when I got a chance to download it on Switch, which it was fairly cheap, it was like 10 bucks when it launched... It is basically almost the same amount of time as you would take to go through and beat the original Castlevania. The characters are different in terms of their play style, in terms of like what you can do with them. Miriam has her own set moves. Let's see here. like uh, Zangetsu has his different type of moves and stuff as well. Then you have that whole like almost Alucard guy like Jeebel and stuff who has his own set moves. So every character that you get along the way in this journey has their own set moves and this and that, but the game also has a little bit of uh, of a twist, which I will say a little bit of a twist of this ending, so if you want to skip ahead like about a minute or so, then eh, so be it. So like the whole twist or something like that, where you got to go back again, only without Zongetsu, because he kind of gets brainwashed and all this other shit. It's like, it's definitely one of those moments where it's like, I didn't see it really happening like that, but it also sets the mood it also sets it into perspective for Ritual of the Night, because Miriam is like the late protagonist for that game that's going to be coming up. So just going through some of those levels again, only without like Zangetsu, and then just having Miriam and like the others, it was a totally different type of gameplay experience, because previously you were playing mostly as Zangetsu, collecting characters and this and that, and then all of a sudden it's like you're playing as Miriam and she has a different play style, but she's a, bit, a little bit faster and plays a little bit better than Zangetsu. But man, this is definitely one of those games where I was tempted to pick it up on PS4 as well and play through it. Because one thing about me that I know is for sure is when I like a game, if I play through it and I really like it, I want to own it on almost every single one of my devices if I can. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's your hyperlight drifter for me. Oh my gosh, I... I hope it becomes that way. But, uh, yeah, that's my number eight. All right. Well, very cool, Gables. Um, Moving on to Justin's number seven, um, Astrobot Rescue Mission. Um, And he put in quotations, phenomenal. So that's good to hear. Um, That's a game I definitely want to check out uh, for VR. Uh, I actually picked it up. I've yet to play it, though. I forgot to put it on my um, pile of shame list. Um, but my number seven, and I think this one might shock people a little bit if you've listened to the show for a while. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Um, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I love this game. I really do. I really, really, really like this game. I don't want, I mean, it's a great game. Uh, but the thing, much like Mario Tennis Aces, the thing I was most looking forward to you know, was the story mode and the single player mode. And same thing with Smash. The only difference was Mario. The only reason I, Mario Tennis. The only reason I bought it was the story mode. This game I was going to buy no matter what. Uh, and the coming in this, the World of Light mode, uh, really hurt it. I mean, if this game, if World of Light mode came out and it was just okay, or uh, it would have been way higher on my list. If it was great, it probably would have been number one on my list. Uh, being as disappointing as it was, despite the fact I put twelve hours into it, kind of like a, a hate playthrough almost in a way. <laughs> uh, kind of like we played through Destiny back in the day. Um, you know, that really hurt it for me, honestly. Uh, but, I mean, looking at the positives of this game, I, I think the entire time I play Smash Mode uh, is just pure joy. I love every second. And I play, I'm playing the majority of it by myself. And uh, the, the big thing is, I, I think all, like, normally when I jump into a Smash game, I, I pick my few characters I play as, uh, whether it's Pit link young link bowser and that's pretty much it uh and then the, the last games of greninja um this game i i don't have a main there's nobody i just want to play as because i enjoy playing as all of them uh all the new characters at least i like checking them out and jumping into them more and more uh that new uh, the, the mode i keep raving about uh squad strike i love going into the 5v5 mode and I'll, at first i was going through and i make like my number four and five character like because you can pick the order you bring them out in I'd always put like number four is Pit, number five is Link, in case I get in trouble. I could bring those two guys out and my, my ringers to help me uh, win the match. Now I'm just going through and I'm picking five characters that I don't play as, as much. And I'm like, oh man, I got Snake, I got uh, Shulk, I got uh, um, Simon, I got uh, Greninja, I got uh, 
what what's the uh, fire Pokemon? Oh, I'm drawing Incineroar. Um, yep. I'll play those guys. And there's like guys I want to play as. Then I'm cutting out of there. I got to decide. There's like I want oh, I want to play as King Kane Rule. I want to play as uh this guy. You know, there's so many characters that uh I want to play more and more of. Like we're in in the 3DS version and the Wii U version. I didn't want to do that. And uh, uh-huh. this game, I want to keep doing that. So uh, I definitely love this game. I, I It's a blast to play. I, the reason, the game one that keeps bringing me back, and I still play, every few days I jump in, I'll play, you know, five or six matches of Squad Strike, uh, is that mode. And that's what keeps bringing me back to it. So obviously I'm loving this game. Uh, just like I said, though, for a, the thing that would have kept me coming back to it every day for hours on end, uh, the World of Light mode uh, ended up being a huge disappointment. So that's the only reason it's where it is, it is where it is. But still absolutely love this game, adore this game. Uh, that's why it is at number seven. So, Gables, what's your number seven game of the year? Spider-Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I could just hear just like the mic drop just <laughs> right away across the freaking internet. But anyway, the <sighs> reasoning why... I have Spider-Man on my list, especially at the lower end, lower half of my top 10, is because the only time that I really had a chance to play it was during Extra Life. And during that whole six to seven hour span where I was just playing good chunks of this game, I mean, I fucking was absolutely having a ball. If I actually went through and beat the game, I mean, this game would definitely be within my top three, most easily. But at the same point, it's like I enjoyed a lot of what I played. I enjoyed going through, swinging through New York. I enjoyed the Doc Ock mission stuff. I also enjoyed the little freaking like uh, mini games and stuff like that. And that's just like little bits, little bits of like uh, the depth that's inside Spider-Man. I mean, this game is pretty fucking fantastic too. I mean, you're going through a lot of uh, the story-based missions and doing a lot of... Taking out certain like boss characters and this and that. I only had a chance to really to go through like maybe one of the various boss missions, but it's like it's definitely worthwhile to go through and seek out if you hadn't played it previously. But at the same time, it's like I had so much of a chunk of that one and stuff. I tried to find the right moment to go back and play it, and everything else seemed to pop up all at once too, especially when. Pokemon Let's Go came out, especially when Smash came out, and it's like, oh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, unfortunately, it's at a low part of my list, but it's on my top ten list regardless. So, Spider-Man is definitely worthy of this game. Okay. Okay. Uh, So, number six for Justin. God damn you guys. You sons of... Number six is Spider-Man for Justin. So... (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. Um... So he said, oh, God. Almost as good as the Arkham games. I vehemently disagree. <laughs> I, I think these games, I think Spider-Man is better than all three Arkham games. And, I mean, I, I obviously, I think uh, Arkham, uh, all four Arkham games, actually. I think Arkham Asylum is still the best one of the four. Um, but Knight was a close second. And I still would rank this higher than all of those. And I, I think a big part of that, um, you know what? That's I'll get to that later. Not gonna get in that right now. <laughs> oh boy, but I'm really upset right now. Oh <laughs> man. Okay. Ooh. God. Okay. My number six game of the year, Gables, is a little game called Shadow of the Colossus. Um, okay. <laughs> fuck you guys, man. Really? <laughs> number seven and six. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh boy <sighs> gotta get my composure back here uh, my, my, I'm completely thrown off right now number 6 Shadow <laughs> Colossus um, you know I, I, Japan Studios I like, I've admired them for years but I never played their games before until Last Guardian and obviously Last Guardian being my game of the year 2016 um just a treat, a beautiful game. Joy, love, uh, bird dog, always will. Uh, I have the statue that sits right next to me every time I record. For a long time, he was actually on the desktop until I had kind of right. overgrew the desk. Uh, but he still sits next to me and stares at me every time I record to this day. The only difference is now is the John Cena hat covers the little boy up. Uh, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, 
But anyways, Shadow of the Colossus, you know, I it's, it's a game I want to play forever. You know, I wanted to play it actually before Last Guardian came out. I actually I own the uh, the pack on uh, PS3. Um, but I'm, I'm happy I never played them before until now. I'm happy I waited uh, until this game came out this past February. Uh, it was like 40 bucks. This game was built you know, it was built by Blue Point, who did I think also did Ratchet and Clink. I want to say I could be wrong though. Um, but uh, jumping into it, built from the ground up, uh, going into it has all the same art style as everything I love about Last Guardian. The look, everything. There's actually even a Last Guardian uh, Easter egg in there. Um, where you find it, a literal egg, uh, but, um, man, this game, it, it's just, it's gorgeous to look at the, you know, the world being empty, uh, I thought would be a little more of a downer, uh, a little, well, not much of a downer, but it would be a little bit of a negative point, but it actually, it, 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 it was the opposite where I felt it actually made the game better where like, there, it's just a boss rush game. Like, and I typically don't like those games. Like, you know, look at Cuphead, like I like I liked Cuphead, I guess, but I just wasn't good enough to play it. But I typically don't get in these type of games. Um, like looking at Hollow Knight, for example. Um, and fucking, I, even though I knew the ending and I knew what I was doing uh, was bad, um, going in there and fighting him every time I, I defeated a Colossus, a Colossi uh, made me feel terrible. Every fight was different and it was great. Um, there was a few in the middle I didn't care for, but Man, so many of these fights were just epic. Some of the greatest, uh, like I guess, boss fights uh, I've ever been a part of. I've ever, I've ever had. Uh, just like finding out how to, how just like oh, finding out oh, I need to jump and catch this guy, this guy, and get on his wings, and he's gonna fly around. He's gonna swoop into the water, and while he's doing that, I gotta climb up him. And it's just these, all these, so many of these. It, it was a, it was a game full of epic moments um, that I absolutely adored um and you know just like i said figuring out what you need to do to defeat these these colossi um doing it and just the scale of everything the fact that this game worked on ps2 was amazing to me but and playing on ps4 and i was playing performance mode so it's 30 frames per second 4k uh even better um but man i every every moment of this game i was just in awe of of everything about this game like and like the, the when you kill the, the colossi like said like they die you're like ah oh, shit this is terrible this is bad I'm, this is because I, I knew the ending you know it, it sucks i knew the ending but it, like I, that was my main thing of why my biggest concern going in this game was knowing what happens and it still hit me hard like oh man okay that like i was still like bummed out and depressed going into it going into the ending knowing everything that happens um but wow um, what a game! Uh, I you know I got I, I talked about like I said in the last week's show. Um, there's always at least a game or two that I I wish I could rank higher. Uh, I just can't do it. Um, and this is one of those games where like yeah, it's number six for me, just like Breath of the Wild last year. Um, it's number six for me this year. Uh, I feel like it should be higher. Uh, I just can't make the argument for it. Um, but. Yeah, so, oh, God, it stinks. But, yeah, Shadow of Colossus, number six, game of the year for me. What about you, Gables? Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Wow. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Cool, 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 The reason why I placed it so high, it's not more or less because of it being basically a Pokemon game and me going through what it was. But, honestly, I was fairly surprised at how much I enjoyed the core experience of it it was definitely a lot more toned down a lot less competitive a lot less like uh frustrating as it would be playing through a normal pokemon game especially if you were like a beginner coming you know from the outside looking in it was very approachable in terms of the playability and stuff i wasn't really pressured to go through and grind as much. I loved the fact that I could go through and just basically get shiny Pokemon any time that I pretty much wanted. Oh, man. The whole epicness of me catching that shiny Pidgey just randomly in the wild. Just going through and using that and then just discovering how the candies absolutely break the game by just overpowering everything. Having, like, a fucking level 20... Like, a level fucking 5 or level, like, uh, 20 Pidgey or something like that. 
and just basically almost being able to just take out freaking elite four trainers and this and that it's like it was one of those moments where it's like i felt like i was absolutely breaking the game just playing certain ways like i wanted to but at the same time i love how simplistic how simplistic not only the gameplay was but how the accessibility of things were i mean sure there were things that i did not like about pokemon let's go pikachu like the whole aspect of the online stuff was fairly dumbed down i mean you you can't like say wonder trade pokemon you can't really go through and have like consistent like battle stuff if you wanted to like a singles like one-on-one or 2v2 it really wasn't as in depth but uh also it's like it's not fairly as easy to get the pokemon that you still need to fill out your pokedex unless you're going through and actually have pokemon go working on your phone and rights which for me at the moment isn't like working as i thought it would <laughs> but uh honestly the whole core experience i liked i mean yeah it took me like a couple weeks or so to go through the game in and of itself but i did like the aspect of i did not have to uh, really teach any of my pokemon like the hm moves in order to go through that it's actually sort of subsidiary thing with pikachu or Eevee, depending upon which version you, you got and stuff, themselves to use these specific, like, moves in order to travel or do this and do that. But uh, I really think that it is a faithful recreation of Pokemon Yellow that is definitely better than some of the worst Pokemon games that I have, like, experienced or I have seen. At the same time, I don't feel like it was worthy of being inside of the top five of the games that I've beaten this year. Because, for one, even though the game was fairly easy, fairly simplistic by that point and stuff, there were games that I played this year where I felt like I absolutely had a blast and had more memorable times with. So, for number six, it's Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Okay. Mm. You make a good argument for being that way. Um, But before we get out of here... Uh, want to go ahead and do our honorable mentions for 2018? All right, sure. All right. Uh, so trying to scroll through Justin's without without spoiling anything for myself. I don't see anything. If I do later, I'll let you guys know. Uh, but for myself, like I said on the last week's show, I made myself a top 15 list. Uh, oh, here we go. So yeah, so I'm gonna give you 15. Stealing of- a. <laughs> Pretty much stealing a page out of my book. Oh, you do the same thing. Okay, cool. Uh, well, actually, since well, not, we made not top, this year. So we, I'm talking about the game of the generation stuff. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah we did that. Um, so for me, uh, number fifteen was uh, Batman Telltale's Batman Enemy, Enemy Within. Uh, this was the final complete Telltale game. Uh, the first episode came out at, at the uh, last year, but then the last four came out this year. So that's the reason I included it for that. Um, it was, you know, I, I love the first season of Batman, uh, Telltale's Batman. Uh, it was great all the way through, uh, with Lady Arkham and everything. And then this one kind of, you know, continue on. And I just, it took a little bit to get going. It, it took not more than a little more than a little bit. It took way too long to get going. I thought, um, episode one was, was pretty good. Okay. There was something cool happening here. Two and three were oh, okay. I don't I don't like where this is going. Four same thing, but then the last five minutes of it really I'm like oh okay. I'm really excited for it. then like the the way they kind of uh, advertise episode five where it actually for the first time ever it felt like um, the decisions you made in a whole uh, season of games for Telltale were like it looked like everything you do completely fundamentally changed the game um, and from everything I could tell it it does like. And some spoilers for that, if in case you're interested in playing it, um, you know, in season one you meet Joker before he's Joker, uh, and he's in like he's only in like a half an episode, and then uh, at the end of episode at the at the end of season one he gets out of uh, you meet him in Arkham Asylum, and then at the end of episode, uh, season one he gets out of the, he gets out of Arkham Asylum, and uh, the whole game is around um, this. Uh, relationship that you build with him like he can like he's kind of like he he idolizes you he figures out you're batman and uh you can either befriend him or and he'll be like your sidekick or you can he can based on the decisions you make in episodes one through four you know he can be your best friend or he can be your worst enemy he can be he becomes joker basically and uh, he, in mine he became joker you know um 
because he, he just to me wasn't he wasn't still he still wasn't a good guy, but he he wanted to do good, but he wasn't a good guy. Um, and I thought the whole final episode of uh, the season two here, uh, Enemy Within, was fantastic. Uh, that that alone kind of propelled it into the spot. Uh, if the whole season could have been like this, it would have been high in my top ten list, I think, or at least maybe not high, but it would have been in my top ten list. Um, but just the way it ended with everything with Joker and all of the build up to that and that final episode was great. So that's number fifteen for this year was Batman and Enemy Within. Number fourteen. It's a weird. It's a really. This is a really hard game for me to replace. It's been pretty much all over the map. It's been. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And just finally, I'm like, all right, it's 14. Because I, I don't, I don't, it's, it's Detroit Become Human. Um, I, I really, I, I play all the Quantum Dream games. I really, really, really loved Heavy Rain. I know Gables, I think Gables, you said you platinumed Heavy Rain. I did back in the day. Yes, I did. Yeah, so uh, I played Beyond Two Souls and went on a huge, rant when that game came out and on this podcast <laughs> yeah, you did. back in the day uh but <laughs> you know i didn't hate it but it was just oh man i was so frustrated especially after coming out of, uh coming out of heavy rain but um coming into this you know i was still really looking forward to this this is actually uh another game that was on my top five or one of my five most anticipated games for 2018 um and I'm all over the map with it, you know? Like, there's a lot of things I really, really like about this game. I really like Kara, and I like Connor as characters. Um, Marcus as a character, I hated his into- and pretty much his entire uh, storyline uh, with the whole, like, he's the Martin Luther King of Androids story, you know? Uh, then there's a, literally a point where he says he has a dream. Um, it's just a little too... Uh, like, okay, I get the story here. You don't have to... Like, I get where you're going with the story, I don't need you to throw it in my face every 10 seconds of, of what the story is, or at least it'll be a little more sub- subtle about it. Um, I thought Connor was a really cool character. I thought his uh, relationship with his partner was all over the map where I, th- I, I was actively, I was making my decisions based off the things I thought he would like based off the things he was saying and the way he re- reacted about androids. And every decision I made as Connor just pissed off his partner even more. So I'm just like, I wanted to make it like a buddy cop thing. And in actuality, he literally killed my character three times in the game. Uh, but wow. because he's an Android, he, he, he just keeps coming back. Uh, so I'm like, Oh, we're going to be best friends. And then I would I'm like, Oh no, he, he didn't like that. What? The, I don't understand what I'm doing here. Um, Cara, I, I really liked what she did. You know, wanting that she was like with Alice, uh, the little girl. I thought Alice, the little girl was terrible, but, uh, I like Kara as like you know her motherly instincts, even as the android kicked in, and all she cared about was protecting this girl, uh, and the whole storyline of trying to get to Canada and everything. Um, and really, what did it to me? And this is kind of my fault. I get that is the endings I got for all three of my characters. I did not like, um, <laughs> and it really sucked with the uh, with with. With Connor is really tied into uh, some minor spoiler. I'm not gonna spoil the whole thing, but Connor's ending is kind of like it doesn't really matter what decisions you make for the, all the other characters because they kind of intertwine a little bit um connor's you know, his ending happens no matter, no matter what the, what you choose there's a couple ways it can go uh marcus's uh it seems like nothing matters except for the final decision you make as him in the game like 95 percent of the so literally everything you do all leads to one point where you, there's three options you can pick and all th- and two of those options lead the one way and one option leads to a completely different ending, which is the good ending, which unfortunately I didn't pick that ending. I didn't pick that option. And then I got the bad ending. And then Kara, I did a really terrible thing <laughs> with Kara. And, uh, I, I picked the easy way out with Kara, uh, instead of the right way out. And I felt guilty about it immediately. Um, and he, like I said, some of these are a lot of that's my fault. Yeah, um, with Kara, is my fault completely. With Marcus's, I didn't like Connor's, it's whatever. Uh, so that's why it's where it is. Uh, number 13, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Man, once again, every uh, Tomb Raider gets screwed every year for me. Um, whether it comes out in a really bad time with you know, in 2013, with all kind of with like Last of Us, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Pokemon X, uh, uh, Bioshock, um, there's so many great games that come out. And then this um, 
you know, then the last one came out. It was an Xbox One exclusive, so no one really played it. And they came to PS4, no one cared at that point. And this game, uh, made by a different crew. It wasn't the original. They're, they're working on the Avengers game, so we have a different crew working on this. Um, I just didn't understand what they're going with the storyline, where it's like, ah, Laura is the reason why all this went bad. And now she's, like, being really cocky and arrogant, and she's kind of being kind of a shitty person. And then it turns into, like, the story about how she's, like, Oh, she's being beat down and she's like, uh, I'm like, I don't understand what we're going for. Like the, the narrative thread in this game doesn't really, it's all over the map. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. The gameplay is really fun. The tombs are really great. I enjoyed all that part, but I like, I really, I really like the stories in the first two games. That's a big part of the reason why I keep playing these games. Um, and I, I, I end up finishing this game, but there's this moment in the game that happens and it happens way too far in, um, where I'm like, it's finally it, the, the narrative changes and like she just turns to like a, like I'm sick of it uh she just turns to a complete badass and I loved it and the last but the problem is I loved every part about that game after that fact the problem is the game ends two hours later so uh when I finally got to the part I really liked and it was awesome it was great and that if that all that happened this game would be for sure you know I keep saying this but this like the, the reason these games are on there is there are these issues uh, this game would have a really good argument for being top ten uh, for me, but that 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 last couple, that last two three hours or so was fantastic. Another game I want to talk about uh, number twelve, Florence for me. This is a game I actually just played last week, and I, I don't feel like this is like oh this is a recency bias type of thing where I just played it, so that's why it's high on my list. Um, I thought this was a very unique story that I think it will touch pretty much everybody um, that's been in like a a, a real relationship where. You know, like being from the beginning, being with a bad breakup, you know, like I, I've been in there, I've been in a relationship where I moved in with a girl, it went bad, we and I had to pack all my shit up and I had to leave, uh, and that game deals with all of this, like, you know, you're going through a rut, you meet this person, you become a better person, everything about you is better, you make this person a better person, blah, blah, blah. things go, you kind of get to a rut in that relationship, and then it ends badly, and then you get to, you know, like, I think most people have been to that cycle. It's a terrible cycle. It, it's, I think everybody can um, kind of, in a way, uh, relate to that. And that's a big reason why I played it. And also, like, our big reason why I, I it's on this list is because it's, it's easily, it's, it's a relatable thing. And also, I like, I think the game, the way it's played, I've never played a game like that before. And it's only a couple bucks. Like I said, it's on mobile. Play it, please. Uh, and last but not least... This is one of the most heartbreaking uh, cuts I've ever had to make in the history of doing these Game of the Year shows. Number 11 for me, um, Moss. Uh, <laughs> it is everything I love in a game. It's a it's arty as fuck. It's got a really good, it's got a pretty good story. Uh, the only thing it's missing is a dog. It's a little mouse named Quill who's absolutely adorable. I love high-fiving her. It's great. Um... But, you know, I played Moss. I don't have really anything negative to say about it. Some minor control issues. The game isn't, like, the action parts aren't necessarily fun to play. Um, it's only a few hours long, which I think is perfect. It's, but this is the first game. You know, I bought the VR headset uh, about a year ago this time. And I was really having buyer's remorse with this. Like, ah, there's some cool tech demos I played. Uh, but nothing really more than I want to play for 20, 30 minutes or show some people. I like show my family or something like that. Uh, and then I played this game and I was just like, the, okay, VR could be a thing. This, this, like, it ends on a cliffhanger. I want to play the second one as, excuse me, as soon as possible. Um, and hopefully we get to play it soon. Uh, hopefully it sold well enough, but I think it did, uh, to, to, you know, get a sequel. Um, but I loved the whole playthrough was great. Um, the ending where you're, like, you're being chased by this giant snake thing and you're like, you're frantically like moving your head around and like trying to find things in the map to, uh, on, uh, you know, on the, on the, on the map to, uh, continue on without being caught by the snake. It's just great. And there's a literal multiple times in this game where I like, it, like they did a great job of jump scares. And then the art style, absolutely beautiful game. This is not like, is it like, it does a good job of like looking really good as far as like you know like you looking really good in the game you want to look really like look great from like an HD standpoint, but also the art style, the art design is fucking fantastic. Um, so that's uh, uh, stings, but it's number eleven for me. Um, 
So yeah, those are my uh, honorable mentions for this year. Gables, what do you got? Well, let's see. Really, for honorable mentions, I don't have too many. The ones that I can really name off the top of my head are some of the more obvious ones. Say, like, Dead by Daylight, I wanted to give a special nod to Mm. because that sucked in a good portion of my time playing this year towards the early goings after having completed going through the stint of my Destiny 2 playthrough with some friends from work online and then just quitting in, like, the early January. But, uh... Dead by Daylight, definitely a fun experience. The whole 4v1 4v1 multiplayer stuff. Running away from a killer. Getting these various perks for each character and stuff like that. It was very fun, very addicting. When you have friends and stuff that actually love to play this game together and stuff. You can go through and just do some like various interesting like, fun strategies. Just like going through and like maybe baiting the killer to do this and do that. Like setting traps as a killer or something like that to, to, to go ahead and like trap would be people and stuff the whole purpose like going through and just like getting these generators online so you can find an escape door and escape hatch and escaping they lead to some like very like uh, exhilarating moments when you find out that you actually escaped while the killer was just there going through and just uh, almost caught you but uh you actually manage to go through and escape just as soon as he enters the room. It just feels like a sense of great satisfaction. Now, there are a lot of DLC and a lot of a lot of things I still haven't gotten into. But at the same point, it's probably going to be another time before I can go through <laughs> some bit more of this game. Because I'm not fairly sure where at where I'm going to be continuing with it. I mean, there are still friends that I have that want to play it. I'm not too sure whether I want to stick with it on Steam or on PS4. But whatever anyone decides or something like that i'll probably go through and join them on there that's definitely a good special like honorable mentions and stuff but another honorable mentions i it's actually part of my like shames list would be like hollow knight as well so for hollow knight it's like i definitely love the atmosphere of the game i definitely love bits of the gameplay and there are certain hard factors that i've already experienced while playing in my short time that I know I'm going to have a interesting time with. But I wanted just to give it a nod because I know it's a great game and if I had actually went through and compl- and actually beat the game this year, I probably would be having it on my top 10 list easily. But what a shoulda coulda, that's my honorable mentions for 2018. All right, Gables, very cool. Um yeah, so I think that's going to wrap up our first half of the show. Um We'll be back next week with our second half going through our top five games of 2018. Um, so real quick, if you guys want to hear more from us, we do have a Facebook page and group, Drunk Dashers Podcast. Like and join us on there. On Twitter, at Drunk Nerds Pod. Follow us on there. On YouTube, Drunk Dashers Pod. Or, I'm sorry, Drunk Dash Nerds. Uh, subscribe to us. Give us, a, give us a big thumbs up on the podcast. Leave us a comment, please. Um, on iTunes, Drunk Dashers Podcast. Uh, subscribe. Five-star review. Leave a comment. On Twitter or on twitch.tv slash Colonel Gables. Follow on there, please. Um, and then on Spotify, we are um, there as well. Drunk Dashers Podcast. Follow us on there. If you know if they do reviews or five star things, whatever, do that, please. Um, and that pretty much covers everything, guys. So uh, thank you guys for listening. I was your host, I was Tyler. And I have been Colonel Gables. So until next week, everyone. I hope you are excited about our top fives because I know I am. So until then, have yourself a fun time and remember to listen to another fun-filled episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds podcast next week. Yep. Bye, guys. See ya.